And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to take a trip to the Mediterranean. We're going to make Greek chicken. To go alongside that, we're going to have roasted fennel, and then as an appetizer, or you could serve it with your meal, we are going to make a bruschetta, a, a, a bread bruschetta, and it's wonderful with a fresh type salsa-ish sort of mixture on top. So, But we're going to get started on the fennel because that actually takes the longest to cook. I've got my oven preheated to 425, 450, somewhere in there. You want a higher heat because we're going to roast a vegetable. Now, I bet many of you have seen this in the grocery store, wondered what in the world is that and how do I cook it. It is delicious. This is fennel. Sometimes it'll be called anise, A-N-I-S-E, and sometimes they label it as fennel. It, it, either one is the same thing. It's a bulbous a vegetable that grows down in the soil and it tastes a little bit licorice -y. If you are a licorice fan, you will love it. I absolutely adore it. Sometimes I just shave it real thin and eat it raw, like with a lemon vinaigrette over it. And then sometimes I toss it into a stir fry, like a primavera, that kind of thing. And then sometimes I just roast it on its own to cook. I'm going to show you how you do it. You want to cut off the top part, the, the, the fronds. Keep those because it, it, they are totally edible. We're going to use ours as a little garnish. And this is one of those times I wish, really wish that you could smell because it, it just totally tastes or, and smells like licorice, which I happen to love. Then you want to slice off the bottom. It's kind of a hard vegetable. And it has layers like an onion. Cut it in half now. Do you see this part right here? That is the core of the product. So you want to take a little sharp paring knife and you kind of want to cut out that core. If the outer leaves are dark or spotted, you would want to take those off. This is beautiful, so I'm going to leave mine on. It has been washed. And then you want to cut it down and it comes in little layers. So I'm going to cut it into slices long way or lengthwise. You can see on here, it would remind you of, of slices of an onion, but it's not at all, doesn't at all taste like an onion. And I'm just going to lay that out on my baking sheet. I happen to adore this vegetable, and I bet many of you haven't tried it. And I thought, when I was writing recipes, I thought, you know, I really want to try some things that are readily available. I see it in every single grocery store that I go to. It's easy to find, but it's one of those ingredients that maybe many of you are like, I don't know what that is and I don't know how to cook it. I don't know what it tastes like and so therefore you don't buy it. Well, I want you to try new things. So that's what we're doing today. And I have three of these. Now sometimes they come pretty big. Sometimes they're a lot bigger than these and you might need just two. And you might just start out with one until you see how you like it. But it is absolutely delicious raw, shaved really, really thin, and put in a salad. Or sometimes I just do it on its own. I do that with celery. And I'll make a lemon vinaigrette with lemon and olive oil and salt and pepper, and I'll drizzle over shaved pieces of fennel. It's an excellent digestive. And what that means is it really helps your digestive system to process your food. It's actually a very potent breath freshener too. So if you're like me and you love garlic, and I do, I love Italian food, I love anything with garlic in it, this will help neutralize that garlic flavor too in your breath. So just a little tidbit of info for you. But I adore it. And it's just one of those flavors. It kind of falls in that category of um, cilantro. You either really love it 
or you don't like it at all. And I, I happen, now you see on here how I've got that little tiny little brown piece. I'm going to cut that off because I don't, I don't want to eat that. Cut them in half and then cut out that little tiny core. That just keeps the layers together. Now sometimes I leave that in and then I just quarter it and do it that way, but today I'm going to take it out. Oh, it smells so good. And if you got the little insides that have the little budding leaves like that right there, that's perfectly fine. Just leave that in. You can eat that. It's really good. And one more here. Let's cut that core out. These are just falling apart. I cut so far down in there, the leaves are coming off. But I do want to slice them. Eaten a whole lot in Mediterranean cooking, in Italian cooking, in Greek cooking, in Mediterranean uh, dishes. A lot of times we'll use fennel. It's great with fish. If you like fish and you buy like a whole fish or um, you wrap a piece of fish around something to roast it, try shaving a little bit of fennel and putting it with lemon and stuffing it inside a fish. It's wonderful with fish. So there you go. I've got just a tray. I'm going to cut that one a little bit more. Uh, sliced fennel. Couldn't be easier. We're just going to toss it very simply. It's a very uh, potent flavor, so you really don't want to use things that will diminish that wonderful flavor, unique flavor that fennel has. So I'm going to do it very simply. Toss it with a little bit of olive oil, maybe a tablespoon or two of olive oil. Hard healthy. A little bit of salt and about a teaspoon of salt, maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. I find with most vegetables, I roast about everything vegetable wise, but with most vegetables, the roasting at a high heat caramelizes the flavors so much that you really do not need to add anything but simply olive oil, salt and pepper and let the flavor of the vegetable shine through. Could it be simpler? Because the roasting caramelizes those sugars and makes it just fabulous. So I don't use anything but salt and pepper on this one and a little olive oil. So let's put this in the oven. I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees because I'm going to be roasting some chicken at the same time. So this recipe is pretty flexible. If you need to do chicken at a, a, a a lower temperature, it's okay. You just might need to, you know, crank the heat at the end just a little bit to get it caramelized a little bit, but it can roast pretty much at the same temperature. Now, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to clean up my board. I'm going to save a little bit of this to show you at the end of how we do. And when I come back, we're going to get started on a Greek chicken. I'll be right back in just a minute. and welcome back. Now we have our fennel roasting away in the oven. Now we're going to make a Greek chicken. Now what I did was I bought a package of three boneless skinless chicken breasts because they were less expensive. If the chicken tenders are on sale get the chicken tenders. If the boneless, skinless chicken breasts are on sale, buy those and cut them into your own tenders, which is what I did here. So this is three boneless, skinless chicken tenders. If you want to use bone-in pieces, absolutely you can do that. I'm trying to do a quick meal for you. And this whole meal, let me point out something, this whole meal, the stove is not going on. So we're going to do everything without the stove. This is an easy to do meal. So, but I said, if you want to use the bone in, you could use chicken legs, you could use chicken, chicken thighs, you could use chicken breast, bone in, and just cut the breast in half to kind of make the pieces the same size. For convenience sake, I'm just using the boneless chicken. So that's laid out on a lined baking sheet. And I always line my baking sheets. I, it's just, it's cleanup is so much easier. Here I have some fresh rosemary. 
which I guess, you know, if I had to pick a favorite herb, this would definitely be it. I absolutely adore rosemary. If you don't have fresh, this is one of those herbs that truly, truly dries beautifully. And you can use dried. But I happen to have some herbs. My uh, a grocery store that I go to sometimes had their bundles of herbs. Even in the dead of winter, they have them. And they're pretty inexpensive. Now, rosemary is a potent herb. Smells kind of, I guess, piney would be the, the fragrance that I would use. So you don't need too much. I want about a tablespoon, maybe two. So I only need those, that amount of the rosemary. So I don't need to do any more than that. And I'm just going to take my knife and I'm going to cut it up. You could also do this in a little food processor if you wanted to. But I'm going to get it started with this knife, which is just truly not very sharp. I'm going to have to get my knife sharpened. I need to get Mike to come on with me, my husband Mike, one day and demonstrate to you how to sharpen knives. He does my knives for me and they're razor sharp. Because if you do a lot of cooking, you, you really are picky about your knives and wanting them sharp because a sharp knife works a whole lot better than a dull one. I don't think this one's any better, so let me get this one back out. I think this one may be a little better. Here we go. Now, notice how I have one side of my knife on the board and I just work the blade over and over, watch fingers, and just chop it up real fine. You kind of want this to be fine. If you have dried, what you can do is put it in a little mortar and pestle, which is the little, um, little grinder that I've shown you before. Or you could just take it in your fingers and crush it up if it's dried. But the fresh, you most definitely need to chop it. You don't want those big pieces of rosemary in your dish. Rosemary is so versatile with any really and truly any meat whatsoever. Chicken, beef, pork, fish, anything like that works beautifully with rosemary. And potatoes, oh I love roasted potatoes with rosemary on it. We'll put that in a bowl with some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Oh, I'm making a paste is what we're doing. I want you know, three or four tablespoons of olive oil and a lemon. We're going to roll our lemon on our board and we're going to zest it. If I can find my zester, there it is. We're going to zest our lemon before we juice it because I, I, you know, I made the mistake one time of juicing it and then trying to zest it in half and it just doesn't work. I've not been able to figure that secret out. So I always just wash my lemons and zest them. And you've heard me say this before, but the truly the zest on the outside has all the essential oils in it that really add a lot of lemon flavor to the dish. Most all the time I zest my lemons before I use them because that's flavor and you do not want to miss out on that wonderful lemon flavor. So add that right in there. And now we will we'll juice our lemons. I love my little reamer. Best tool that I have for doing a lemon. I need a little strainer. If I got one handy here. Nope. Okay, well we'll pick out the seeds. If you have a little tiny strainer, I usually always try to juice these over a strainer. And this one is a juicy, juicy lemon. Notice I did it on the board with my hand first before I tried to do anything. What that does is loosens up the cells inside the lemon. Look at all that juice mm. in the lemon. It makes, makes more of your juice come out. They have come out with all kinds of newfangled juicers. Nothing beats this tool right here. It's readily available. You can find it everywhere. I do not like the metal ones and I do not like the plastic ones. I like this just old fashioned wooden reamer. A couple of dollars at any cooking store out there will have these. One thing I do want to point out for you, make sure that you find one that has that pointed tip. You see how that has a very sharp point on it? That really gets down in the lemon. Some of them are dull. They're rounded and it doesn't do as good a job. So just a little piece of information for you. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, about half a teaspoon of pepper, about a teaspoon of salt. Kind of stir that together uh, with a spoon. Just stir it together. S check if you have any lemon seeds, and I do. Let me get that out of there. I don't want to eat that. I've eaten many lemon seeds. And then just take a brush, a little pastry brush or a little 
you don't even have to do this you can use your spoon if you want and you want to brush this chicken all sides of this chicken with this wonderful mixture that you just made oops I forgot something I'm glad I did that oregano I forgot the oregano about a teaspoon of dried oregano just put that right in there it's okay we all do that don't we we forget ingredients and then remember so let's go back over the chicken and add that oregano in there mm. oregano is one of those herbs that I really like dried better than I do fresh I don't know why I think fresh just is a little bit strong for me so I really like the dried oregano most herbs I prefer fresh but that's one that I really do like dried better than fresh I do use a lot of dried herbs for different things now let's turn our chicken over get some tongs or your hands either one best tools God gave you are on the ends of your fingers or your hands the ends of your arms I guess I should say your hands clean hands really truly a cook's best tool and then brush the other side this is going to go in the oven just alongside our fennel these pieces are going to take about 20 minutes or so if you have the bone in pieces you will need to let them go a little more till they're done I like my chicken to be cooked through you know make sure don't eat underdone chicken you know you can eat beef medium or even rare but and you can even eat pork cooked to medium but not chicken make sure that you cook your chicken all the way through for all you beginning cooks what that means is when you pierce a piece of chicken the juices that come out run clear or on a meat thermometer about 160 to 170 for chicken breasts so we're going to get this in the oven with the fennel I'm going to take a quick break clean up when I come back we're going to make some bruschetta I'll be right back in just a minute Now our chicken's in the oven and our fennel's in the oven and let's get started on our bruschetta. Now what bruschetta is, uh, we're doing Tuscan bruschetta. Bruschetta is just bread that is toasted and topped with something. And I'm going to top it with a mixture of cannellini beans, so you've got some protein in there, and some olives, and some red pepper, and just delicious flavors together. But the first thing we need to do is get our bread toasted. This is a French baguette that you buy in any grocery store out there over there in the, the deli section that'll be a snack for me in a few minutes but I want to cut it you see how I'm got instead of just cutting it straight like this I'm cutting it on an angle about an inch thick the reason is you want that long surface and then just put it on a lined baking sheet I toast it in the oven under the broiler both sides and then that way you can top it with whatever you want sometimes I do it with just a fresh tomato and some mozzarella fresh buffalo mozzarella or regular mozzarella whole mozzarella I've done it with the bean mixture that I'm doing today you can do it with um, if you make caponata with eggplant and all that you can top it with that and top it with anything but all we need to do is just get it in the oven so we're going to Mm. the ends I keep for a snack brush it with olive oil both sides just like this and then get it under the broiler and toast both sides all right now here is our bread that is toasted the pieces are just good and toasted on both sides that's all you need to do now let's make the topping in my in the bowl of my food processor I have one can of drained cannellini beans that you can buy where you get the kidney beans and the pinto beans and all of that kind of stuff they're cannellini beans if you cannot find cannellinis 
You can use Great Northern. Um, the flavor won't be quite the same, but it, it'll be pretty close. But I love the cannellini beans. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, about three or four tablespoons. And I might need to add more depending on how smooth my sauce ends up. You won't know that till you start chopping it up. I have one can of uh, four ounces or so, about half a cup. Uh, of black olives. Now you can use Kalamata olives if you can find Kalamatas. You could use Kalamatas. You could use the green olives, whichever you like, but I'm going to use the black olives today. And then all I want to do at this point is pulse this together with just a little bit of salt. Don't add too much because the, the olives and the beans have some salt in it. And about half a teaspoon or so of pepper. Pulse it four or five times and I'll show you what you want it to look like. Now, let me see. You can't tell this till you just take off the top and look. This is perfect. You see how it's just still a little bit chunky in here? That's what you want. So we want to take it out of our food processor and add, be careful with that blade. Remember that blade is very, very sharp. So put that over here. And I'll just get this out. You want, I'll show you. You want it to be kind of chunky. Mmm. I love cannellini beans. You see how it's still kind of very chunky? That's what you want. You do not want it to be totally smooth. We're going to add some fresh basil to this. This is just about half a cup of fresh basil. If you cannot find fresh basil, do not substitute dried. Just leave it out because the flavor of dried basil to me is just non-existent. But the fresh is fabulous. And I find it pretty readily anymore in the grocery store. Sometimes they're in those little plastic, small little... Um, Clam shell thing. Sometimes I'm finding it in the big, you know how you get salad in those big plastic clam shells is what they're called. I find basil in that sometimes too. This is quite a bit. So let's just add, I don't know, maybe a fourth of a cup or so. And then we will see if we want to add any more. Basil has a wonderful flavor that will mimic the fennel actually. And then I'm going to garnish with a little bit of red pepper. Cut out the top here and I'll show you what we're going to do. Mince it kind of fine. You could use roasted red peppers too if you wanted to. I adore red peppers. The flavor's sweet and just wonderful. You want it minced kind of fine. You could stir some into your mixture if you wanted to. I'm not today, but you can. Now, I'll just eat that one. Stir in that basil to make just like a chunky little spread. Now, with your bread, take some room temperature cream cheese and spread some of your cream cheese on top, just a little bit. You could use the flavored cream cheeses that you find. The herb, garlic and herb would be wonderful on this. You could do that too. This is just plain cream cheese. But you can use anything you want. The Cherevel, the, the wonderful French cream cheese is delicious. You could use goat cheese if you wanted to. You most certainly could use mascarpone, but I find mascarpone can be kind of expensive. Cream cheese is easy to find and not very expensive at all and delicious. So I'll just, I'm just going to do a few for you, and I'll finish up the rest later, show you how to do this. Then take your wonderful little bean spread and put some of it on each piece. And then top it with your roasted or your red pepper. And there you go, a wonderful little appetizer, bruschetta type thing. It's just fabulous. This is a Tuscan bruschetta. All right, now here we go. We are at the best part, and that is the eating part. Here is our finished 
Tuscan bruschetta, which is a baguette, and we made that little wonderful little mixture of cannellini beans and some olives and some fresh basil, and then we topped the bread with cream cheese and then put a little bit of minced red pepper over top. Wonderful little starter appetizer or serve it alongside your meal, either way you want to do it. And here is our chicken, our beautiful chicken, our Greek chicken. We used lemon and oregano and fresh rosemary and salt and pepper. On chicken tenders you can use whole pieces of chicken or whole breasts or whole legs or whole thighs or whatever you want to do. You could even cut it into bite-sized pieces and roast it in the oven. And then our delicious side dish, our fennel, is all roasted and caramelized. I had a little bit of fresh basil left over. And basil and fennel kind of have a, a, a similar component of flavor. So I just topped it with a little bit of the fresh basil, but you don't have to do that if you don't have any basil. Here is our delicious meal. Try these recipes. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.